Did you know that in 1979 there was actually a war between China and Vietnam? China invaded Vietnam in 1979, but Vietnam utterly defeated the PLA. But didn't just beat them, completely kicked their asses and sent them home crying. Well, they've just done it again, but this time destroying any chance they had of getting into the Soccer World Cup. Can you imagine growing up not knowing that America went to war with Vietnam? I mean, it's not like we can hide the truth, right? It's a fact that it happened, and everybody knows the many complicated social, humanitarian and worldwide repercussions suffered as a result. Well, did you even know that in the 70s China had two wars with Vietnam? In 1974, China seized the Crescent Group of the Parcel Islands from the South Vietnamese government in the Battle of the Parcels. In 1979, China invaded Vietnam and in a month-long war China captured several Vietnamese cities near the border. They were however driven out and completely humiliated, suffering massive losses. Their lack in training led to all manner of costly mistakes, and even though they were backed by hundreds of tanks and artillery, had to make a hasty withdrawal, losing up to 280 of their tanks and armored vehicles to the very well-experienced and well-trained Vietnamese. But don't feel too bad, China. Everybody loses to Vietnam. The thing is, in China, the war that China had with Vietnam in 1979 has been quietly swept under the rug. It is not taught in schools and it is never ever mentioned on state media, in the news, or even in the history books. In fact, Chinese dictator Xi Jinping said at a UN meeting, China has never invaded or bullied others. Is this another case of the Chinese government thinking the rest of the world are morons and will simply buy their bald-faced lies? I would say so. How about we take a look at history for a little bit here. Other than the China-Vietnam Wars of the 70s, there have been other instances of China invading other countries. Heck, in May of 2020, Chinese forces invaded India by entering the Galwan Valley and occupied Indian territory. This led to the death of many soldiers on the ground, and for the first time in decades, shots were fired between the two superpowers. The source of this conflict is majorly attributed to China's land grab or salami slicing techniques. You know, they'll move a little bit in, they'll start to build a little encampment or something, then they move a little bit in more, you know, on disputed grounds. And of course, finally, uh, India is like, hang on a second, stop doing this. This is really annoying. Get the hell out of our area. You know, that kind of thing. What about uh, war with the Soviet Union? Well, guess what? In 1969, the Chinese army launched an attack on the Soviet army due to a disagreement over the Jumbao Island. It's a tiny river island that's situated between Russia and and China on the border. Actually, they had an unofficial seven-month conflict with the Soviet Union, and Mao even had a secret underground complex built under Beijing called Di Xiacheng, which means the underground city. There are many Warrenous tunnels and uh, special rooms for hiding out, and the idea was that when the Soviets launch a nuclear attack against Beijing, the populace and, of course, all the important you know, CCP officials will have a place to hide underneath the city. Um, I myself actually searched for an entrance to the city a few years back, but unfortunately most of it's been closed off. It still exists there, but it's been largely forgotten. Let's talk about India again. In 1962, China invaded India and seized the border region of Aksai Chin, an area the size of Switzerland. It's not a small amount of space. China also attempted to seize Arunachal Pradesh, India's northeasternmost state, but ultimately failed. During that conflict, India suffered massive losses, and that's actually what um, spurred the Indian government to focus on developing their nuclear program and, and building a nuclear arsenal so that they could retaliate if this kind of thing ever happened again. Something you probably all know about, in 1950, China invaded Tibet. Now, the Chinese government doesn't recognize it as an invasion, but you know what? The Tibetans surely do, and many of them still fight for their independence and freedom to this day, with the Dalai Lama being exiled to foreign lands, trying to lead from there. How about in 1949 when China annexed East Turkestan, which they now call Xinjiang? The Chinese government believes that the region of Xinjiang has always been a part of China since ancient times, but they don't have any proof other than a couple of pretty non-existent and 
um, fleeting mentions in ancient texts. But of course, no, it belongs to us, so we're just going to take it. Now, prior to the CCP, China, of course, under various dynasties, invaded Korea, invaded Vietnam, etc., etc., but that's ancient history. What's relevant is that the Chinese dictator Xi Jinping was willing to lie to the United Nations and to the world about the fact that China has never invaded or bullied anyone. If the Chinese government is so comfortable to lie openly to the world like that, it proves that China and what the Chinese government says is only sometimes truthful. And in fact, they simply lie to fit whatever narrative the Chinese government wants at any given moment in time. This is probably why the Chinese internet is having a complete meltdown and hissy fit over the fact that their soccer team, or football team, whichever you prefer to call it, was completely and utterly destroyed by the Vietnamese team, who they see as inferior. They can't understand how this little country of Vietnam was able to utterly destroy them in a sports competition, especially since China has spent billions of dollars on their whole football industry, or soccer industry, by buying stakes in overseas clubs and buying expensive coaches or hiring expensive coaches and poaching players and all this kind of nonsense. And of course, in comparison, Vietnam has spent almost nothing on their football team. If the public knew about the Sino-Vietnamese War of 1979, perhaps this modern day thrashing would not come as such a surprise. <laughs> all joking aside though, when it comes to sports, Chinese teams always fail miserably at team sports. Whilst China often claims gold medals in individual sports, such as diving, ping pong, and gymnastics, when it comes to team sports, there's absolutely something lacking. This, without a doubt, stems from the way Chinese children are educated. Education is a vicious struggle and competition. You have to be better than your classmates and take advantage of any opportunity to surpass your peers in order to secure your success in the Gaokao. The Gaokao is this incredibly important entrance exam. All children have to write this and this will secure a position in university for them. But of course, due to the large population, there are only a very few spots in these universities that can be filled, especially the desirable universities. So it's an incredibly fierce competition in order to get the best grades, in order to get into a university at all, never mind one that you want to get into. And of course, there's all sorts of cheating and other nonsense that goes along with this. But the amount of pressure that's put on the children often leads to suicide. It's an awful, awful state of affairs. A culture of intense study has been fostered in mainland China, and it is reflected in the Olympic schools that train athletes from a young age to constantly practice and focus on being the best, lest you get cast aside. So what happens when you have a team of players all trying to prove that they are the best? Well, if everyone's trying to be the hero, the teamwork suffers. Why pass the ball to a teammate when you yourself have the opportunity to score that goal and claim all of the glory for yourself? Well, if everyone's trying to be the hero, the teamwork suffers. Next time you're confused as to why China, a country that excels at winning Olympic gold medals, can suck so poorly at team sports like football, remember that it's due to the cutthroat culture of competition in order to survive brought upon by the bad leadership of the CCP. And perhaps China can eat some humble pie and learn something from their small neighbor of Vietnam who keeps kicking their asses. And let's be fair, Vietnam kicks the asses of anyone who messes with them. Anyway, until next time, just like the Vietnamese football team, stay awesome.